Hey guys, we're back. This time we're going to take a look at Red Dragon Inn 4. And this was the first real expansion that added a new overall mechanic to the game, not just new characters. Red Dragon Inn 3 started introducing some of the characters that have new mechanics, like, um, I can never remember her name, the little pixie and her wolf, and um, things like that. The potion deck for Frank the Alchemist, I think his name was. This one actually adds new game mechanics in the respect that you're in no longer drinking in the Red Dragon Inn. You're actually on the ship, the Crimson Drake. And all of the four characters that come with it are actually the crew of the Drake. A lot of people find it interesting that there are three females and one male, too. So it's a female heavy um, box. I think all the other ones have been two and two, I want to say. The uh, Red Dragon and two might have been three guys and one girl, but anyway, it's a it's a female heavy set, which is kind of interesting. Gives you more female characters to choose from, and there's nothing ever wrong with that. The new setting of the ship adds a new event deck, which is kind of cool. You can play it with any of the other existing characters or with this set as a standalone. It just adds a new option to the game if you want to uh, go that route. But yeah, the variety of the new characters is nice. There's the captain, the first mate, the... I don't even know what Boatswain is, but you have that. And uh, the navigator, who I find ironic that is blind. But anyway, we'll get right in and uh, take a look at him. So the first thing we have here is our rules flyer. And uh, because this is a standalone box version of the game, it contains all the rules you need to play the game right in here from scratch you can play four player right out of this box all the way up to however many players you want to play from previous boxes you have everything you need to know is in there next thing we have is the special rules flyer for red dragon and four and this has the rules for the sea event deck and how to use it and how to play it throughout the game and the only new character in this set that has a new mechanic of his own is remy and there's a little section here at the end on how to play Remy. Next thing we have are the large player boards. These are in all of the big box expansions. I personally like these ones better because of the actual deck slots where the other ones just kind of have a little tab on the corner telling you where to put them. But at the same time, these are less convenient to carry around, especially if you're playing bigger games. And they don't have the extra spots on where to put all the various decks that come with some of the newer specialized characters. Red Dragon in 5 came with a complete set of character themed ones. It even has the picture on there about the character. And it has special spots laid out for all of them. So those are kind of more convenient to have around. There's even a spot for them in the tra uh, character troll box. But these I still like. I just wish there was an easier way to uh, carry them around. They don't exactly fit in the new box. So next thing we have here is our new Sea Event Deck, and this is the new mechanic that this expansion adds to the game. It's completely optional. You can use it or you can skip it. And um, you start out by having these progress tokens on here. At the end of each player's turn, one goes away. When they're all gone, you reveal the top card. And uh, it explains on here what it is, what happens. Some are good, some are bad, some are kind of neutral. And then there's a number in the corner here. That's how many of these tokens you'll put back on the deck for the next one. It's an interesting mechanic. Adds some uh, some new odds and ends in there. I think there's an attack. Let's see if I can find the attack one. There's a giant squid attack. And um, just adds some interesting new content to the game. I love the fact that it's modular. You can add it. You can skip it. You can add it to your old games, and um, it's just something extra and neat that you can throw in there when you feel like it. As always, we get a pouch of the glass beads for alcohol and life counters. A bunch of the coins to use. As always, this is a larger box set, so you get these larger coins. I like these so much better than the small ones that come with the Ally expansions. I say that in every video, I'm sure. But uh, 
we replaced ours with plastic ones and eventually we're going to get some metal ones just because it's more fun to, to toss them around when you're joining a gambling and hear them clanking together and whatnot. But these work perfectly fine for what they are. And you get a ton of them too. Because this is a standalone game, you of course have a new drink deck. As for the last few, I don't think there's anything spectacularly new in here. These have been in previous expansions, but uh, there are some nice ones in here, that one especially. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any new events at the end. No, pretty standard stuff in there. Always nice to have more options though for drinks so you can mix and match and customize your own. I know what a lot of people like to do now is to take all of their drink decks, shuffle them all together in one big pile, and then you take 30 off the top and use that, and when they run out, you take the next 30 and go on. Because you still need to use them in groups of 30, that way you can get the um, to the part of the game where everybody has to pitch in a coin to buy another round because the deck's empty. So you want to keep that aspect of it, but... There hasn't been anything spectacularly new in these. I think the last one I saw was in um, Red Dragon in 3. Had the one where uh, the monster attacks. And then there's a few other unique ones. Of course, all the promo cards in there too. But it's always nice to have more variety in the deck so you don't know what's coming next. So next we have our four characters. We have Captain Whitehawk, Terra the Navigator, First Mate Remy, and Bryn. The Boatswain, I'm still not sure what a Boatswain is, but uh, the uh, three girls here and then Remy. I'm going to do Remy first because he's got a little extra mechanic that goes with him. Remy's an interesting character. They call him a Dren Spider. I think he's a Dark Elf. It's whatever they wanted to call that, but his new mechanic actually um, marks players. If I can find a card here. So the player who played that card becomes marked. When you mark a player, they get one of these to represent that he's watching them. And then um, a lot of his cards have dual abilities. If uh, the player is marked. There we go. Here's a good one. So this one here. A toast. Let bygones be bygones. Each player gains one alcohol content. If you're marked, you gain two alcohol content instead. So things like that, they get a little bonus because of uh, being marked. And there's different cards in there that also will unmark and things like that. And anytime you use it like that, it also uh, removes it. So he's an interesting character. And um, not an overly complicated new mechanic, but it adds a little bit of uh, something new in there. Next up we have Captain Whitehawk. And... Um, she tends to be a very uh, interesting host, as well as a very violent host. So as long as things are going her way, she's very helpful. Uh, she likes to, um, like this case, shares her drink with her crew, things like that. But she's also got a lot of aggressive cards for uh, when things don't go her way. She can also hold her liquor pretty well, so she's got a few that remove um, alcohol content, which is nice. Bryn is a big brute of a woman, and uh, she has the muscles to back up whatever she threatens. It's one of my favorite cards right there, with the cannon. And uh, a lot of hers are based on physical damage, but she also has things to reduce alcohol by a lot, because, well, it takes quite a bit more to get her drunk. She also likes to defend her friends. Apparently is a klutz. There's a few of those in there too. But just a neat all-around character. And the last one here we have is Terra the Navigator. She's probably my favorite out of the set. Because uh, she's a psychic who's also their navigator, who's also blind. So a lot of her cards go um, point to her supernatural abilities here to see the future and things she likes to predict what things are going to happen and they're not always good usually good for her but not for anyone else 
I just like the character, the theme of the character. The artwork's pretty entertaining, too. I think she's one of the few who actually has a way to heal herself, too. So, that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. And that's a really quick look at what's in Red Dragon Inn 4. If you're a fan of the series, it always adds a little bit more. This one adds three kind of generic base characters which work well with Red Dragon Inn 1 and 2. They don't overly complicate, they don't have new rules or mechanics to learn, and they mesh well with the other characters. Uh, Remy's a little bit more complicated, but not too terribly much. But it does add the new Sea Event deck, which is a whole new mechanic added to the game. can be added to any of your Red Dragon Inn games, or you can leave it out. I like the fact that it's modular like that. Nothing really depends on you having to use it. So it's a really neat little feature that you can make use of when you want to add a little bit more to your game, or you can skip altogether when you don't feel like dealing with it. It's a solid box, though. New characters you can never go wrong with. You got one new character with a new mechanic, so there's a, that little extra complexity in there if somebody's looking for something just a little bit more. And, as I said, the, the C event deck adds new options to how you want to enjoy the game in general. Overall, though, it's a good expansion. I like it just for the event deck. The characters are... Hit or miss, definitely nice to have some more strong female characters in there, so I won't knock that. Remy's pretty nice too. Just more generic characters, which as someone who's been playing the game for a while, I have a lot of the ally packs and things like that to have the each character is very specifically unique with new mechanics and things. And there isn't that much of that in here. So that could go either way for you. If you're looking for more basic characters, this is the way to go. If you're looking for those more specialized characters with unique mechanics, then the ally packs and things like that are going to be the route that you're going to want to look at. Overall, though, I think it's a solid addition to anyone's Red Dragon Inn collection, just for, for the fact of having new characters and the new Sea uh, Event deck mechanics in there. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for our look at Red Dragon Inn 4. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.